help, but you can't live in that help. Purdue has a strong offense and a lot of people who can move that ball around, but what they sometimes lack on the other side of that court is rebounds, blocks, and steals. So going into this game tonight, we will see if they build on that momentum and build and help their defense out. Back to you guys. So much, Alex. Changes will be made from those Monday games, but something that hasn't changed is a lineup for both of these sides, Max. And really, when you look at it for the Norse, it's Idre, he's gonna have his hands full. They struggled against FSU size-wise. Well, that doesn't quite get easier when you come to West Lafayette. Yeah, it's Idre just standing at six foot nine. He's gonna be the de facto center of this game. Obviously lining up against his opposite in Daniel Jacobson, who's seven foot four. And even if they plug a Tijere at the four, he's gonna have to go up against Kaufman Wren, who is six foot 10 and also very strong. So we'll see what happens in this game. Their offense is gonna have to go through Vilsen and Dilling this game. Well, we're so glad to have you here on a Friday night where as the temperature falls, it increases here inside this magnificent arena. And it's time to see, can the Norse hang with the Boilermakers? They did it last time these two teams played just over a decade ago, 2012. 2013 season, the Norse took the Boilermakers all the way down to the end. They're actually leading by four points with 50 seconds to go in that one. Big three made by Purdue, and then some free throws gave them the win. So the series sits 1-0 at the moment. The Boilermakers in the gold with that white strip. And the Norse in the all-black. It almost looks like it could be a scrimmage game with these colors. And with that, the freshman, Jacobson wins the tip off. The first freshman to start for the Boilermakers at center since 2007, 2008. That was Jawan Johnson. Before that, you have to go all the way back to the 80s to find another Braden Smith. Straight away doing what he wants to do this season, Max score. Those high ball screens from Jacobson have been lethal in the first couple games, the exhibition games they played, and against Corpus Christi. We'll see if Northern Kentucky changes their defense. When they played Texas A&M Corpus Christi, they doubled Smith on those high ball screens, allowing him to pass it off inside. We'll see what Northern Kentucky does to defend that. Vincent doing a really nice job. Fake it the first time, gets the mid-range jumper to fall, and Max... It's obviously an electric atmosphere in here. And so for the Norse, I guess just having those nerves calm down and take that first big pressure from the Boilermakers. Yeah, I mean, just seeing the ball fall in the bucket is definitely a good thing as Jacobson ends up hitting the floor as he was followed by a Tijere in the paint. Yeah, holding his knee there and he is still limping. So potentially we'll see Berg come in here and He's going all the way off. We hope that isn't anything too serious, but the Swede is going to check into this game early. Those two are almost fighting for minutes right now, but you hate to see that for such a promising freshman. Yeah, the knees just got tangled up in the paint with the Tijere, and obviously Jacobson's seven foot four. It can be hard to manage your limbs when you're that tall, and obviously those tie-ups are going to happen, and he's going to head over to the locker room now as Berg checks in and we'll probably get extended minutes this game. Also maybe see Burgess as well who declared that he won't be a, a red shirt this year on Sunday and so the Boilermakers have so much depth in this team as we see a nice one from the corner from Harris. And it's those kickouts that have been super dangerous. Obviously you have Braden Smith who's such a good passer but Everyone on this team can pass. Fletcher Lawyer can pass. Kaufman Wren's a very good passer from the interior. Shakari Harris is a good passer. It's Idre puts that one up and gets over the head of Berg, and that's a big confidence booster to get it over the size disadvantage that he has. There's been some comparisons of this Boilermaker team to the Baby Boilers, maybe less so the youth, but more the fact that it is going to be that big three Smith Lawyer Trey Kaufman Wren, who will bring a, the majority of the points. Dilling takes it to the top of the lane, gives it back to Robinson, who goes against Trey Kaufman Wren. That's going to be a great battle this game. It looks like Robinson getting a slight moral victory there. Yeah, that one took a tip on the pass right there, as we can see Robinson trying to cut it to the exterior. Lawyer guy's hand in there. Stopping the pass to a TJ on the, or rather not a TJ, it was Gerziger on the ring. 
Robinson, the Hamilton, Ohio native, had the team high nine rebounds against FSU. He can produce from the three as well, but can also do it in the paint. Tijeray can't make that two full, and Smith will bring it up. And those are the shots that you really need to hit if you're Northern Kentucky, if you want to keep in this game, because they double teamed on the low post, and Tijeray was wide open for a really just short seven-foot hook shot, and he just couldn't hit it. Those are the shots that you need to hit if you're Tijeray. Smith trying to drive around, and Tijeray there finds Lawyer on the weak side. Lawyer puts that down. And Max, if the Boilermakers can spread the Norse, it should be a night where they can get things done, especially if Berezka is going to do that. Yeah, three for three to begin the game for Purdue from three. I mean, when they have open looks like that, they need to take them, and that's what Lawyer does. That's his game. He doesn't have to handle the ball all that much with Braden Smith in the game and Jakari Harris in the game also. The 75th sellout in a row here in Mackey Arena. And great atmosphere as always in the first Friday night game, so maybe adding to that slightly in the paint crew in full voice as always. Lawyer inside to TKR. Double team there and really nice hands. Harris to Smith. He drives it in. And the big man, Berg, physically getting the edge there on the Tijere. And there's the size difference right there. Berg standing at seven foot two. He's a strong seven foot two as well. And the Tijere just couldn't pull that down as Berg just kind of reached over whoever it was in front of him. Gresga did a nice job of getting underneath the hoop. Wasn't able to put it down. Dealing though from the wing. And the Boilermaker is giving the Norse a few extra chances here, but three chances and nothing coming from it there, Max. Yeah, I mean, just struggling right now for Northern Kentucky. They're not really getting a ton of good looks, and the good looks they are getting, they're not hitting all that often. And really, Purdue has just been kind of swarming the ball and just swarming the passing lanes, making it just a little bit more uncomfortable. And that's something that they've done even as the team's inbounding the ball after they score. They want their point guards to press them, and, you know, they don't necessarily want them to steal the ball immediately, but at least feel the pressure so they set their offense up 21 seconds to go instead of 26. The Mackey Arena faithful, not happy about that call, as you could imagine. But they're happier about that one as it turns in favor of the Boilermakers. And with that, we will send it to our first break. We'll be back in just a moment on Big Ten Plus. Every season we give it all. We give our strength. We give our passion. We even give his passion. It's in our blood. And now we can give that too. This season, Abbott and Big Ten are pitting school against school in the largest blood donation competition of our lifetime to fight the largest blood shortage in a generation. Want your school to win? Give blood. So this Monday marks Veterans Day, and so on behalf of everybody at Big Ten Plus, I would like to take the moment to say thank you to all those who have served, are serving, and their families who endure so much by their side to make this country what it is, the greatest country in the world, second to nobody. Thank you. But so far, Max, the Boilermakers starting hot again. They did that, though, against Texas A&M, so it's, I guess the Norse just need to hang around. Yeah, and that's kind of what they did in the first half against Florida State. I mean, they kind of struggled up in the first half against FSU, but then they were able to hang in it and just keep FSU a little bit uncomfortable, even in their home stadium. But 
Northern Kentucky, you can't rule them out of this game. They're a very good team. They can get really streaky shooting from three. But right now, they're two for six from the field, 0 for one on threes with Dilling missing his only shot. And that was a wide open chance from the elbow. And that's one that he's consistently hit in years past, but just isn't hitting in the first two games of the season. Yeah, the Norse are a lot lighter on the offensive end this season. They lost Marquise Warwick to Missouri, and also Michael Bradley, who graduated. They combined for 40% of the Norse's points, but a bigger stat probably is the fact that 56% of the threes that the Norse scored were through those two players. So, Gerezka, Dilling, two of those players that they're gonna look to to try and fill that void. Yeah, and obviously last season wasn't exactly what they hoped, just 18 and 15 on the season, 12 and 8 in their conference, the Horizon League, and it was really just a lot of injuries last season. Lawyer from the corner puts it down with ease. Two for two from that same spot. Four for five in the early going from three for Purdue, and five shots have been from three of the eight that they've taken this game. And for the Norse, another concern is the fact that a lot of that has come from outside and not inside the paint. Smith trying to speed things up. Lawyer from deep. That was a heat check if I've ever seen one. And Painter was yelling at him as he went back on defense. Not happy with that one. Understandably so. That was definitely not the shot that you want someone to be taking. You can't blame the Boilermakers. They're feeling themselves right now as a beautiful bounce pass in to TKR and the foul called. Smith doing what he does best, finding teammates with those beautiful passes. Yeah, fantastic feed down low and good paint entry pass. And now it's right on his second foul already. And we've only played five minutes of this game. And so they're going to have to dig deep into their bench now. The Norse do have some size on the bench they could bring in, but probably not expected to play. You've got the likes of the Lithuanian, Rapalis, the freshman, and then also 6'8", Okoto Nanahare from Madagascar, another freshman, but if it comes down to it, they could always bring them in. And for now, they've gone with Cesar Cholombo, the sophomore, the redshirt sophomore. Yeah, Chalambo, a physical player. Maybe what the Norse need right now, but he can get into foul trouble early. Northern Kentucky looking to just try and take the sting out of this game, slow it down, and have a slightly longer offensive possession. Dilling, it's chaotic on that far side. They find Vincent in the wing, back to Dilling. He takes the shot, and he puts it down. And that's just what he needs to do for Northern Kentucky tonight. Yeah, and that's one of those ones that I think they would have rather seen Vincent take that shot just because he was wide open. But obviously, if Dilling's going to go ahead and hit that shot all day, that's his comfort spot, the right elbow. That's where he's really good. And with that, a three. And then a mistake by the Boilermaker is getting the Norse a second opportunity. Dilling led scoring for the Norse, as mentioned, 18 points, 6 for 6, and 46% from behind the arc. And that's actually the same percentage that he had last season. He has an interesting jump shot, but a big personality and player on this team. Colvin in the game now, does a nice job deflecting that one and putting Lawyer on a quick transition. Goes up against Robinson, and Robinson does a good physical job there. Robertson probably glad that for once in this game he had a height advantage. It's been quick action here early in West Lafayette. There's another foul called in the paint. That time, though, I believe Chalombo it was called on. Yeah, frenetic pace from both of these teams. A little bit lackluster with the ball thus far. Just the passes haven't been as crisp. And that's kind of the thing with Purdue. They're trying to find guys that can handle the ball outside of Braden Smith. Obviously, you put the ball in Braden Smith's hands. He's going to make magic happen most of the time. But it's really up to Colvin, Lawyer, Cox when he comes back in the game, Jakari Harris. These are the guys that need to start stepping up with the passing. Chilombo, a native of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. It's in a collection of international players that are 
potentially going to come on the court tonight. And Max, maybe not from places that you would think. The Democratic Republic of the Congo, Lithuania, Madagascar. I mean, Sweden maybe made the most predictable one because at least in Sweden, they, we know they have a lot of height. Yeah. And Lithuania, I mean, they've had quite a bit of players start coming out of Lithuania as well. A couple players in college. I mean, two on this roster for the Norse. And really right now, they're just trying to get some touches and just get a feel for this game. We'll see what happens with the lineups that they want to put out. But obviously, Atija Ray in foul trouble early. Not a good sign. Well, it's getting really physical. And Colvin's fired up because he does win that battle. Talk about Lithuania, though. You speak about the crowd in Mackie Arena. Eastern Europe has some amazing basketball crowds. Really nice job by Cox to secure that. Does a pirouette and hands it off to Smith. And Burgess checks into the game for the first time. And a big moment for him as he'll start sharing minutes with Berg this game. And he has the chance to prove to the Boilermaker faithful why he won't be redshirting this season. And that is why. Physical and dominant inside the paint. Yeah, fantastic job from Purdue, who have just been fantastic. I mean, they've been a lot more active on the defensive end, a lot more active hands. Really good pass from Smith that set up Colvin, the dish to Burgess. And the Unfortunately, I have to break some news that Boilermaker fans are not going to like me for, but Jacobson has come out of the locker room on crutches, and his right knee is iced up. Although, Max, it does look like slightly below the knee, so hopefully it's nothing to do with the knee area, maybe more high shin. Yeah, obviously an unfortunate injury for Daniel Jacobson, the freshman from Chicago, but, I mean, Purdue, it's just got to be next man up at this point. You know, Raleigh Burgess and Will Berg are going to have to split the minutes tonight and we'll see what they can do down the stretch but obviously Jacobson a big loss for this Purdue team. Well then when we were in shoot around I said to you that it seemed like Burgess was the most vocal actually out of all those front court players and you never like to get extra minutes when a teammate gets injured but a big opportunity here and something that Painter said in a media interview yesterday was the fact that in that game against Creighton, he guarded Colt Brennan really well, the center of Creighton, who then went on to have 49 points in his season opener. So he can take on size, and in Painton's words, he's actually probably the most complete package out of all those front court players. It's Israel with the breakaway here. Cox charges back, Vincent on the left, and a nice transitional play by the Norse. And that's one of those plays that, you know, Purdue fans have kind of grown accustomed to seeing from Braden Smith. He's a very good passer, but sometimes it just feels like he's doing just a little bit too much. And that was one of those plays where he was trying to make a very flashy pass, and obviously it just got picked out. And Good transition bucket for the Norse. You mentioned it, 18 and 15 last season, the Norse in the Horizon League. They finished, picked to finish third, excuse me, this time round, but fifth last season. That's their worst finish in eight years which tells you the direction they're going in that league. And that is up. And our direction is heading to the break. So we're back in just a second on Big Ten Plus.
Well, welcome back. 21-9 the score. The Boilermakers starting quick, slowing slightly though. And Max mentioned it slightly just before we went to break. But Northern Kentucky top three is where they're predicted to sit at the Horizon League at the end of the season. Last five years, three 20-plus wins. Yeah, they're a fantastic team. And, you know, their head coach, Darren Horn, has done a fantastic job in transitioning them into this kind of mid-major powerhouse. Obviously, like I was mentioning earlier, it kind of didn't work out for them last year. They had a lot of injuries, especially specifically with Sam Vincent, who ended up tearing his ACL uh, early on in the season and not available for most of conference play. But they're a good team, and if they stay healthy with all the transfers that they brought in to replace the scoring drought that they that um, Marquise Warrick left after transferring to Missouri, they're going to do a number on Horizon League again. Entered Division One basketball in 2012, 2013, and proven why they deserve to be at the level of Division One since then. Only one or two losing records in the last 11 years. They've never been the top 25 team, though. Understandably so. I mean, a mid-major team that does drop conference games pretty regularly, even if it is just a few, you know, it is hard to get to break into that top 25 in the NCAA, especially being a new program like they are. Grezga was trying to get it into the corner to Pettis the second. It ends up, though, all the way back to Dilling, who's under really good pressure from Heidi. And the Tijere into Robinson, who's actually got a height advantage there. Doesn't make the most of it. Out to Dilling. And the shot clock will reset. Northern Kentucky's been doing a really good job on offense, forcing these switches and getting these mismatches in the paint, especially with Smith switching into the paint and guarding the likes of Trey Robinson or a Tijere. But... Right now, they just aren't really taking advantage of it to the extent that they should. It does almost feel, though, that that was an opportunity they won back because Robinson was guarded by Smith under the bucket. Yeah, and that one's kind of difficult because if you don't put that one up instantly like you saw right there, you're just going to get swarmed by three, four guys. And so the kickout isn't a terrible idea, but, I mean, Dilling's got to make that shot. I mean, that's essentially what it boils down to. With how good of a shooter that he is, he needs to hit that shot when he's wide open. Heidi thought about it in the corner. Painter said he wants to see Heidi take all those shots where he gets open. He's a great three-point shooter. They're looking for him to just get physical this season. Smith, no look past the Colvin from the corner. And there, Max, the Norse get lucky, but a lot of players just looking at the ball. Yeah, but it's been a pretty physical game and great find there into the paint. Because Robinson's able to finish that one off. But it's been a very physical game up to this point. And Northern Kentucky looks up to task. And Purdue, obviously, you know, you play these Big Ten opponents like Purdue. And they're going to be more physical and more demanding. But Northern Kentucky, they look like they're, they're into it right now. This is the smallest starting five that the Norse are going to face against the Boilermakers tonight. With Jacobson obviously out the rest of the evening. Berg off the court and Burgess out. First, can't get that one to fall. And picked up by Pettis, the second. Very good footwork down in the key from first. Just not able to get the left-handed finish to go. Grezga, front and center, puts that one down. The Norse are doing a nice job of finding space, Max, but maybe some of the movement off the ball could improve. Yeah, and Purdue really has not, they have not scored in the last three minutes and 30 seconds. Let's see if I just jinxed it. I did not but they haven't scored in a long time. And that's kind of one of those things that, you know, when you leave that, when you leave the starting lineup for Purdue, where does the point production come from? Obviously we talked about Smith wanting to be more of an active scorer on the team, but right now it just isn't falling. Out of all the players out there right now, you think Colvin especially is gonna have to step up and sink some shots, putting some good pressure on Dilling, but jinxed him a little bit. And I think Dilling was shocked how much space he got around the corner. Yeah, miscommunication on the switch. They got lucky that Dillon was missed that one. Smith getting double teamed. Beautiful pass around the back. And Colvin from the wing. Never really had a chance. Miles Colvin, a career high 14 points, 4 for 4 from 3 to start the scoring. And that was a game where it was still tight. The Boilermakers just one point ahead when he made that first three. And then he just went on a torrent of threes. 
The Norse now seven to nothing in the last 3.25. Yeah, and Purdue just can't find one right now. I mean, they've had inside looks that were good, just couldn't find the bucket. They've had threes that looked good, couldn't find the buckets. There's an offensive foul on the Tijere, and that's going to be his third. The Tijere getting his feet caught up there with Cox off the ball. Just moving his feet slightly on the screen there. The Tijere and Mike Dell, North Carolina native, junior. Big player that last year got injured down the stretch and that was a big loss as obviously the Norse got ready to go into the Horizon League tournament. Sophomore year came in from Marquette. He needs to watch his fouls in this situation. Vincent, really nice steal against his fellow number two lawyer on that far side. And that fires up the Norse bench. with that we'll take a time out ourselves and bring it back about how he's uh, about talk excuse me about how um looking at people with opportunities on and off the court we've seen a lot of subs happen so far in this game um and that's just showing the opportunity that painter is trying to give those players he wants to see who can stick out he's trying to build his assembly team he's trying to build the strongest one possible for later games on in the future we saw one of the first subs happen at the beginning of the game with Jacobson getting hurt and being subbed out. And with that, we had some continuous subs come in through, and we've just seen a lot of chances of opportunity for all the players. And I'll be interested to see what happens next and who he subs in continuing in this game. Alex, and you know, Max, Alex hits on that point where Paint is basically saying that nobody in that front court had separated themselves to the point where they're going to dominate the minutes. Like the idea was Jacobson Berg, we're going to split the minutes, Berg is maybe coming in. Well, unfortunately, by I guess a natural cause, that's now changed and it will be Burgess and Berg for the rest of the night. And, and hopefully, we'll see Jacobson back quickly, but we don't know what that injury is completely just yet. Yeah, with Jacobson, obviously, it is difficult. You know, he did seem like he was going to be the main center for this team, at least in the last couple of games he's played. Obviously, in the first game, he got the majority of the minutes and played very well against what was a pretty decent Texas A&M Corpus Christi team. But right now, I mean, what, I'd, what I've seen from Purdue on defense, much, much better than last game. I mean, they've caused seven turnovers. They're a team that's usually very passive. Usually just trying to run the shot clock out, not really for steals, but maybe that's just an effort of Northern Kentucky's carelessness with the ball. You talk about nice defense, really great job by the Boilermakers to close down Gorezga, who puts up a shot in the end, doesn't fall, but the Norse get the call to go their way. A lot of credit for Robinson finding Gorezga on that far side. Yeah, Northern Kentucky kind of a a bailout shot there from Gerezger who was able to just chuck it up and hit the rim and ended up in their possession after it went out of bounds but again running the shot clock very very low and not being able to get up a good shot. Pettis the second goes all the way underneath the hoop fires it out to Vincent. Gerezger again finding some space on that left wing side but a double team coming he fires it in and just like that we see the newcomer into this Rapolis one of the pair of Lithuanians the seven-footer, 240 pounds, and the Norse clearly saying that right now with the Boilermakers having their big men off, taking, I guess, the most of that opportunity, but I've said that, and now Will Berg is getting ready to check in. Yeah, and right now, Purdue just having a lot of miscommunication with the switches, which was kind of a theme last game, but we'll see if they can figure it out. Kaufman Wren, double team there, and we see Rappler's get his hands in the air. And in the end, it will go in favor of the Norse. So the freshman Rappelis getting the win against the very experienced Trey Kaufman Wren. Yeah, kind of a interesting call there. I mean, obviously one of three results, either a foul, a jump ball, or a travel on Trey Kaufman Wren. Two of the three don't help Purdue at all. But obviously Northern Kentucky is on some kind of run right now, 9-0 in the last five minutes. And 
20 seconds as it's a carry. And it will be a turnover. So ball goes back into Purdue's hands, but they haven't scored in six, almost six and a half minutes. You say that, Max, but I guess half the problem is that they're still down five points. So although it may be good defense, they've got to get this offense going, the Norse, if they're not making the most of a six-minute drought. You don't expect that to continue for the Boilermakers. Yeah, and right now the turnovers are killing them. I mean, it, there's eight turnovers just with over six minutes to go in the first half. They had 22 against Florida State. I mean, they really need to start taking better, better care of the basketball. Smith sends that one down range, unable to get it to fall, but TKR cleaning up the mess and getting something from that trip and ending an extensive drought for the Boilermakers scoring. Gerezka, deep two, bounces around, and Berg doing what he needs to do, defensive rebound. Good leveraging from Berg there, beating two guys on the glass to get that rebound. Boy, it goes up, no foul called, TKR. On the follow-up, gets his place roaring. Works out in the end, but maybe an interesting decision, Max, by Lawyer in the corner after he's made two from that same position, not to just be automatic and send it. I think it was just the closeout coming for him that I think maybe he could try and bait him into the air and get a mid-range jumper. He didn't end up jumping, but really good work from Trey Coffin ran. I mean, he's such a workhorse inside for Purdue, even when he's not playing a true center role like Berg and Jacobson have taken over. But Trakoff and Wren, big, strong guy. Sellersburg, Indiana, just has played here for a long time. And he's got a lot of experience. One of, the, one of the top recruits in his recruiting class. I think people tend to forget that because he's been overshadowed by just so many good players at Purdue. But he is a fantastic basketball player. Career high, nine rebounds last game as we see Berg going against Wells. And the foul called on Berg there. Burgess electing not to redshirt. One of the reasons that decision was made so hard was the success that Trey Kaufman Red had as a redshirt. And they kind of looked at him and said, well, it worked for him, maybe it worked for me, but in the end, Burgess will play this season. It's hard with the NCAA rules on redshirting compared to football. Football, you can play in four games before redshirting. And I think me and you spoke about it, Max. Maybe Painter would have liked that rule in terms of letting him play a few games and then maybe redshirting him. Yeah, certainly. I mean, Raleigh Burgess, like we've talked about, he's what? probably one of the most complete packages just in terms of how well-rounded his game is. He's a mobile center. He can get it done inside. He can really stretch the defense. He can shoot from the outside. He's a good perimeter defender, too, but he's just not the best at any of those categories. But he's been fighting. He's really worked hard in practice, and that's why he's not redshirting this year. He's going to get time. Smith dancing around, puts up the mid-range, and that's a beautiful play by the leader, Braden Smith. Some pretty ball handling there from Braden Smith, something that Purdue fans have grown accustomed to over the years, but man, just w cutting his way through the defense and getting that fadeaway jumper, that mid-range is where he loves to pull it from. Devorius, the other Lithuanian, checked in now, dilling from the wing, unable to get that one to fall, that's where Gorezka's found some space as well, and really nice job by Vincent to snatch that one out of the air, but Harris tracked back nicely, and the Boilermakers handle it. Yeah, Lawyer getting his hand in there, rejecting the layup from Vincent. Beautiful pass to that far side. Harris, not quite the legs on that one. You see the hustle there from the freshman. The foul called, but nice job reacting to losing the ball. Yeah, and Coach Painter just looking at Jakari Harris, just saying, hey, no reason to foul there. They've got the rebound. They've got the defense in transition. No real reason to foul there is kind of a silly foul for Jakari Harris to pick up. But he's so good on the ball defensively that you sometimes do want him taking those risks. But obviously, you don't want him getting in foul trouble for silly fouls like that. Harris, 6'3", 200 pounds. I'm barely six feet and nearly 230. So I'm starting to wonder that maybe I should stop running my mouth and running on a treadmill, but a great athletic build there on Harris. Invited to try out for the Mexican national team in June, where he made that initial cut from 15 to 20 for the Olympics, but wasn't invited to Paris. But a big career coming up for him in the old gold and black. Josh Dilling taking it to the top of the lane, but again, the Boilermakers, some good pressure on the outside. They had a very big mismatch in 
in Smith guarding Wells, and they didn't take advantage of it. Favorius puts that one up, and Vincent, a beautiful pass to him, and kind of wasted opportunity there with that shot. Yeah, the shot clock reset when the ball didn't even hit the rim. Ended up hitting the back of the backboard, but Purdue up 27-18 here in the early going. We'll be right back here on Big Ten. On the screen, he moved back to the West Lafayette, Lafayette area recently. So great to see him coming to more of those games here. Pena, if he wins the regular Big Ten championship this season with Ty, Coach Katie with six. What a shot from Dilling. Oh my goodness. I mean, that was a prayer, and he somehow hit that. Well, right now, the Norse just seven points back, and every moment seems to be gaining more confidence. Pass inside from Harris to TKR. Good pressure, though, from the Lithuanian. And Lawyer once again open on the weak side. But the foul is called. Yeah, Pettis picks up that foul on the reach on Lawyer, who's trying to kick it out. Look at this shot from Dilling. Oh, my goodness. Twisting and turning around. Trey Kaufman Ren putting up with the left hand. I mean, Josh Dilling, we know he's got a weird jump shot, but oh, my goodness. I didn't think that he'd hit that. Sometimes you just got to pray. Sometimes you'd better be lucky than good. Well, I, I'm a testament to that. <laughs> So we see here Lawyer going to the line. And that one bounces in and out. And picked up by Wells. The Eclair, Wisconsin native. Big jump expected from him this year. Looking to just get him more aggressive. Can be a guy that's a consistent double-double getter. And he's having a pretty solid game right now. Yeah, Smith pulled down that rebound for Purdue. And he hasn't, he's played every single second of this game thus far. Nice hands there, find Smith open at the top of the arc. And no question when it comes to Smith. Yeah, two for four from range for Britton Smith this game. Not quite the stats he put up in the full game versus the Islanders a couple days ago, but he's getting there. Pettis the second, couldn't get that one to fall at the top of the paint. Boy, I've thought about it from that corner where he's found himself a home this game. Some hands coming in there from Pettis. And the referee agrees with me. Yeah, Pettis is not going to get away with that. He's doing it for way too long. Just trying to get leverage with Coffin Wren. Just kind of hit him in the head, the hand, the arm. Like a boxing it, match. Yeah, it'd probably be easier to name the places where he didn't get Coffin Wren other than the ball. That is the second, uh, the Semmer City, North Carolina native. All freshman Horizon team last year. Off the bench with 12 points last game. And that's only the fourth time in his career that he's got over 10 points. Last season had that huge game-tying buzzer beater in the Horizon League quarterfinals, which would see the Norse get the victory in overtime over Wright State. For Max, the North showing themselves very well on defense, but it's interesting because we've seen the Boilermakers, especially Lawyer, get open on the weak side a lot, and maybe Purdue just needs to get a bit more confidence and take that first time shot. Yeah, I mean, they've caused five turnovers. It, that's kind of their bread and butter, at least it was last season. They averaged over eight steals a game, which is very, very good. I think it was top 50 in Division One. One second to go. Vincent puts it up forced more than anything but the pressure good from the Boilermakers Burgess comes back in Colvin getting in the air like a homesick angel and a beautiful touch to get some points yeah smart pass there they're playing at a really quick pace not something that you're typically used to seeing with Purdue well it feels that when this game speeds up it favors the Boilermakers so maybe Purdue looks to try and speed the tempo up, Lawyer getting down and dirty. Pettis the second though, finds it, and the Lithuanian will finish the job. Under a minute to go now in a half, which has been, I think, more than interesting, Max. Yeah, it's been kind of a weird one for both teams. 
Purdue has really finished it out stronger than they started it, that's for sure. Obviously going scoreless for almost seven minutes. Colvin from the corner, count it. And Miles Colvin starts to come alive here late in the first half. Yeah, Colvin up to five points now. It's his first three of the day. Purdue shooting six of 13 from range. And they'll probably get the last shot. It seems that finally in the close here, the Boilermakers waking up and remembering that they can score. 22 seconds left to go in this one. CJ Cox checks in on the baseline there behind Vincent. Vincent with that wrapping ACL post age ACL injury wrapping on his knee he tore it last season and the Norse fans will be very happy to have him back Robinson goes against the young freshman Burgess out to Pettis the second Norse would have liked that one but Robinson gives him an extra chance and finally is fouled there great fight from the Hamilton Ohio native yeah Robinson getting down and dirty on the offensive glass fighting Raleigh Burgess for that offensive rebound. Pettis had a decent look, but long rebound. Robinson pulled it down, and Burgess right across the arm. And Robinson will go to the line for sh shoot two. Burgess just getting his back caught behind Robinson. Robinson, the vocal team leader, 33 points last year in that same Horizon League semi final, the preseason All League Horizon. And then also in that 23-24 season, Horizon Defensive Player of the Year. And we see some of that fight here in West Lafayette. Makes that one. So the Boilermakers with 4.7 will actually take a timeout. They want to make the most out of these final moments. And it just shows it's that kind of game. You know, they're, they're concerned maybe in that second half they slow down again, Max. Yeah, and definitely those... Those plays after timeouts are very important, and obviously you should get practice in them. Even though you're up 13, you know, this game is close, but this is more about, you know, practice. Who's gonna get the ball here? And obviously, the ability to fight, to, you know, go through with post timeout plays is definitely the way to go. But we'll see what happens, see where the ball is going to end. Well, right now, 37-24, and the Boilermakers probably would take that scoreline if you'd ask them where they wanted to be at the midway point in this first half. The North swinging it as close as seven points. Yeah, Northern Kentucky is going to be kicking themselves for how they're shooting from three, just two of ten right now, and that is just subpar, and that's not a way that you're going to be able to keep into in this game with Purdue. It's kind of what kind of pushed them out of the game with his F versus FSU, shooting a lot of threes, not hitting a ton of them. But now you gotta keep shooting and trying to get back into the game, but you don't wanna chase. That's the important thing. You can try and get back in the game without chasing. You mentioned it, they put the threes up, they just have to get that percentage out of the 20s as Smith sends one from down range, but just hitting the backboard, so that is it. 37-24, Max, and the Norse have the chance to come out, but the defense needs to stand and the offense needs to increase. Yeah, right now, it's really the offensive issue. 37 points for Purdue in one half is very good. They've held them down to a decent amount of points, but right now, the offense just has to start clicking for Northern Kentucky, but Purdue starting to click on their own on the offensive end. Obviously, in the middle of that first half, they were really struggling to find any kind of offense, any kind of creativity, any kind of shot making, but now down the line, they've done much better. Both sides finding players in space on the offensive end, but who can get the ball in the basket? That's the question. We'll be back here in just a moment. You're watching basketball on Big 10 Plus. It's on Big 10 Plus. The Boilermaker is now right to left on your screen in that historic gold and the Norse in the all black. Lawyer, lots of space here, and that's how you start the second half. And that's the exact way you don't want to start at Northern Kentucky as head coach Darren Horn just kind of bent over and started talking to the bench. He just couldn't understand just how free Fletcher Lawyer was. 
Lawyer found himself open quite a lot. Really nice play there. By Tijeray, who we saw less of in the end of that first half, given that he was starting to get into foul trouble. Yeah, Tijeray playing more like a center in hockey there, kind of just deflecting it back in. It wasn't the greatest alley -oop pass, but he was able to knock it in for, for two. I think the correct word for that one is it was a cheeky play. I suppose. Yeah, Max hates when I say that, but you know. <laughs> we see a travel call there on TKR. And right from now for Northern Kentucky, they've just got to keep playing solid defense. I mean, right now they're making Coffin run uncomfortable in the paint. I mean, he hasn't had a heck of a lot of attempts, field, field goal attempts. He's had a lot of free throws, but otherwise they need to keep straight keep Trey Coffin Wren a little bit further away from the bucket, and then obviously the offense has to start picking up a little bit as well. The boiler mic is in the latter part of that first half, playing with slightly less size. Berg in there right now. And up to a Tijeray, tries to put it on the head of the Swede, unable to do so. Smith dives under it. And the shot clock will reset back to 20. I didn't think a Tijeray, he even had a chance of putting that in with how far away he was from the bucket, but He's got that really long wingspan, so he almost put that in on Berg, but good interior defense. Great double team there. Not one you want to be in, but it means space is elsewhere, and Dilling finds it straight through the lane. It's extremely athletic, as you've just seen there. He got airborne well over Will Berg's head. He likes to go for those short corner jumpers. Yeah, that was a really sweet breakout of that double team in the low post and finding Dilling who's had trouble getting going this game. Berg tries to maybe get some respect back from a Tijeray, but he goes down. The foul in the end is called and the ball decides that it's needing a break itself and stays up there. Yeah, kind of an unfortunate one there for Berg. Just couldn't get it to fall quite as he was falling away from the bucket through the contact and Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer were Telling one of the referees, hey, I think he got fouled there. Quite honestly, I don't think I have an argument against that either. When it comes to the boiler mic, is three bigs. Berg's the one that has the most aggression. Garezga from deep, unable to get it to fall, and Harris gets airborne and secures it. Berg, though, just needs to show a bit more of that aggression here, because right now, Matijuay is getting slightly more on him. And that's the fourth foul. And the commentator's curse on Atijere. Yeah, good spin move there to get past Robinson. And Atijere had to come in and help. Not sure I'm in love with the call, considering it was his fourth. But the call is made nonetheless. And Atijere is now back out of the game. He's only played 12 minutes, and he's got four fouls. That means that Paulius Rapolis will come in. He's getting a lot more minutes than what he did against FSU. That not being difficult, given that he didn't play against FSU. I was looking at the wrong thing when I said that. <laughs> but again, a big moment to come in here and get your first start for the Norse. Robinson trying to get the Lithuanian to make a move, fakes it. Figueresga finds Vincent, who finds Rapolis, and Smith guards him there. And Smith on the breakaway. That one just kind of bowled out of the hands of Rapolis and couldn't quite contain it. Smith from the wing. Puts it up, not able to put it down though. It checked the whole rim and checks out. So as you can see, some of that really nice ball handling skills. Nice screen there from Robinson, but Gresga elect to take it in, maybe doing a little bit too much and gives the Boilermakers the ball back. Groska's really good at finding space where he really shouldn't. Kind of fitting through those tight, narrow windows. Lawyer takes that one from Smith and takes the three points back to the other end. Lawyer's done a really nice job this game of finding space on the weak side. Yeah, Lawyer four for five from deep. Got 14 in this game. He's been a big part of the offense. Obviously, he had 21 against Texas A&M Corpus Christi, and now up to 14 in this one. Just like we saw at the end of that first half, the game speeding up and going against the Norse. They need something here. Berg gets up. Vincent somehow takes it out of his hand, gets the ball back. 
And Berg swats him down, but it's a foul already. Yeah, a bit unfortunate there for Will Berg, who tried to come down with that rebound, but he just got swarmed and couldn't pull it into his body. The Norse take a timeout to slow things down, and we'll be back in just a moment of Big Ten Plus. And it looks like six to ten from the field against Texas A&M. Three for five from four, three. His father, John, a scout for the Clippers, so I'm sure he's very happy about the new into it dome that opened its doors this past week. A beautiful facility. Yeah, and on the topic of kind of trying to figure out your offense, that's kind of what Northern Kentucky has been trying to do just generally, trying to find their identity. Still 2 of 11 from 3, and really they didn't shoot all that many threes last season. They attempted 656 when the opponents they played shot 815. Now, I know the Horizon League is a run-and-gun league that they shoot a lot of threes in, but even so, they're going to want to get that number up this year just because of Josh Dilling and the just the efficiency he brings from beyond the arc but right now it's just not clicking and 32 percent from the field in total is not going to get it done they are out rebounding purdue they have nine offensive rebounds and obviously you've seen what has gone on with in the paint they've just kind of swarmed the big men for purdue the paint crew awaking like a sleeping lion starting to roar we haven't heard them roar too many times tonight because for the most part it's been a defensive game max yeah, for sure. It's been a physical game. It's been what I would term Midwest basketball. It's hard-nosed. It's tough. It's been played more or less through the paint. Smith just assessing his options. Lawyer fires in a rocket to Trey Kaufman. Wren handles that light. The first baseman in baseball turns around, puts it up. That thing had some heat on it. Yeah, it was a good find getting it to his weak shoulder so that he could turn inside and get that finish over Rapulis, but just good, better passing from Purdue this half, certainly. The Norse trying to find some quick hands. The problem is their short pass is easily defended by the Boilermakers, and that's a really nice job by Wells in the corner. And that's the thing with the Norse. They've been finding these really, really big mismatches. Smith on Wells is about 10 inches of difference. I mean, they've been finding them, but they just haven't been hitting the shots, and they haven't been taking true advantage of them. Once again, the North stop the Boilermakers. Wells will try once again from deep. All metal, though, that time. But nice to see a bit more confidence to take the shot. 23%, though, Northern Kentucky. 3 of 13 from 3. The foul called on the North. Yeah, Rapulis just immediately got leveraged by Burgess, who, I mean, they're just trying to deny the, that interior pass, trying to get Purdue to beat them from the mid-range instead of inside the paint and from the three-point line. And Braden Smith has still not checked out this game. He's played all 25 minutes of some change. Well, Painter, when he got interviewed yesterday, someone asked him, is he concerned if Smith is getting too tired with how much he's playing? And Coach Painter's words were he could go and play another full game afterwards and made the point that in practice, they go two, three hours non-stop. So you should expect a player at this level to go, but still with how much he does, you can see he's sucking in some air. Yeah, he's not particularly laboring through every possession, but, I mean, it does grow on you as the game goes. And, you know, the timeouts every four minutes can only help so much as Burgess ended up falling over but that's a, again it's just one of those things I mean Chalumbo had a wide open look as Burgess ended up falling over but couldn't get it to go that's a veteran move there by the freshman let's Chalumbo go past him and then puts it up and him and Jacobson all oh, the freshman really cocked Harris they've come in and shown what they're going to do here in Mackey Arena. But how much older they are than what their age suggests. Cam Heidi checked into the game, the last possession. Yeah, and we really haven't seen a lot of Chikari Harris or CJ Cox this game. I mean, that's probably just because of a rotation issue, just because with the injury to Jacobson early in the game, maybe you're 
wanting to get some bigger bodies, different lineups out there. But I mean, Jakari Harris has only played three minutes. C.J. Cox has only played one. And not the not the numbers that you would expect from guys who were regular entrants into last game. C.J. Cox did a nice job when he was on, though. Getting on the ground, trying to win the ball back inside to Burgess. Does the ball makers go, but not able to get the and one call. C.J. Cox, the Lexicon, Lexington, excuse me, Massachusetts native. Uh, kind of amazing story was not recruited by the Boilermakers or anybody that high to be honest until June when coach Painter saw him whilst watching another recruit at an AAU game so talk about fate there it is and he's coming here and he's showing that he's going to have a long career for the Boilermakers Painter saying that he should have played more against Texas A&M Corpus Christi and maybe thinking the same right now But when you're as deep as the Boilermakers are, it's sometimes tough to remember who, who's getting minutes, especially when there's an even split in the skill in certain positions. That one goes out of bounds as the Norse tries to speed it up. A good hand in from Lawyer. I mean, if that one got past him, probably an open three in the corner. At the very least, an easy transition bucket. It's actually the second Big Ten Horizon League game that we've seen this week. That's an aggressive slam down. Slam down, excuse me. By Itajeri over Burgess. Again, you see that athletic physique he's got. Pettis takes it off Smith. That's unexpected and gets that to fall. And suddenly the Norse, two big back-to-back -back plays. And that's the exact thing that the Norse have been looking for. Just some sort of spark. Just to start up the offense again. Smith not happy with that call, thinks it should have been a foul called on Pettis the second. He's going to try and get his own back, hands it off to Burgess. Burgess, though, not able to get it up. Once again, the third time he goes up without the ball. And Gretzka charges forward, hands it back to Pettis the second. Wells, it's Israel causing chaos in the paint for the Boilermakers. And Colvin finally coming through and cleaning things up. This has been a terrible minute or so for Purdue, and Matt Painter sensing the momentum shift is immediately going to call a timeout. I mean, Raleigh Burgess couldn't put it up three times, couldn't get it in. Lazy turnover from Smith in the backcourt, just uncharacteristic from Purdue, as we'll see what adjustments they make out of the timeout. We'll be right back here on Big Ten Plus with more basketball. It's not just a helmet. It's a symbol of pride, forged from grit, sacrifice, and strength, proudly resting on the shoulders of warriors, steeped in history, but focused on the future, inspiring the belief that this year could be the year, proudly boasting battle scars and badges of achievement, rising high to victory. So come on, strap in, ball out, and fan up, because this is big. Every time the Boilermakers seem to have figured this game out, they let the Norse get back into it. And we have a look at some of those shooting percentages. And, you know, the Boilermakers are shooting well. But somehow Northern Kentucky, mainly through their defense, Max are staying in this one. Yeah, and like I said earlier, I mean, Northern Kentucky has always been very active with the hands on defense. And they really do try to induce a lot of steals by pressuring you, full court pressing the point guard so that they're not comfortable bringing the ball up. But obviously, the shooting percentage are not great for Northern Kentucky, but they're right back in it now. It is your uh, absolute highlight piece there over the head of Burgess. Burgess will want to forget about that one. Luckily, he's got a long career ahead of him, so it will be a distant memory 
at some point, but right now probably feeling the sting of that thing. And I think, honestly, if Desiree wasn't in foul trouble, this could be an interesting game because you feel, Max, that the Norse are maybe underusing him right now. Yeah, and that's the problem with you know having as many fouls as a Tuzare does. I mean, you can't put him in. You can't put him in the game for as long as you want because it's just, quite frankly, it's irresponsible. You don't want a guy fouling out with 10 minutes to go when you might need him with five minutes to go because you need him to guard Will Berg or you know Raleigh Burgess or Trey Kaufman Wren or anybody. On average, one of the bigger fives that the Norse can get out there right now with Wells and Tijere trying to make something happen in the paint. Colvin and Gorezga charging forward, and we see the return of Favorius back into this one. It's the longest we've actually seen Max to Tijere in the game since getting into foul trouble. So the Norse sensing that time is running out. They need to make the most of him. Yeah, he's been playing a bit safer, especially on defense, so that he doesn't pick up that fifth foul that would immediately disqualify him. That was one that he nearly got away with and maybe could have gotten the foul rung up on him there, but instead no call, and Purdue does come away with the rebound anyway. Berg doesn't quite get in the air for that one. It almost falls to him, but either way, it's a rebound. The Norse have quick hands, but the problem is... A lack of movement off the ball is meaning the space is easily closed down by the Boilermakers. Smith trying to find some space of his own. Inside to Berg, and a sweep puts it down. Yeah, the switchback was not on there for the Norse, and they just kind of forced it, which forced Berg wide open in the middle. And I mean, you'd have to be silly to think that Smith's not going to find that pass somehow. I just heard a fan behind me shout, come on defense. It almost did sound a little bit desperation, the fact that Purdue has the chance to close this game out, but the defense for the Boilermakers still just giving the Norse some hope. Yeah, TJ going right at the teeth of the defense right now. He's playing with some aggression on the offensive end. I think he's taking a couple liberties knowing that, you know, Bird can be susceptible to fouling as well. Beautiful play there by the Boilermakers. Lawyer, Heidi, and Berg. The cherry on the cake. The M1 call as well. Yeah, again, just kind of a pointless double team. I'm not, I mean, I understand the foul call was on Gerezger, but maybe not the smartest foul to pick up. But Northern Kentucky conceding the free throw now and chance for a three point play for Will Bird. Gorezka now with three fouls, and I think definitely out of all three, that's the one who want to get back. Yeah, I'm not really sure he's stopping, but what I'm saying is I don't think he's stopping Berg in that situation. Yeah, and it's like, I mean, there, it wasn't, there really wasn't much for him to do there. I mean, it just, he's behind Berg. It's kind of just a silly foul, as you see the previous play, where, again, the miscommunication, Berg was wide open in the paint. I mean, when Wilbur is open in the paint, he's just going to slam that thing down every single time, without a doubt. That was the play from a bit earlier. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the foul that was just called. A similar play, though, as Berg came down also in that one. Yeah, and that's kind of the problem that Northern Kentucky's had today. I mean, they've been switching relatively effectively all game, but then when the switches go wrong, they go very, very wrong. And that's just been problematic because then Purdue's getting open looks and Purdue has not really been missing in this game. I mean, they're still shooting at a very high mark, 44% from three, 51% from the field. I mean, the free throws have been an issue for Purdue, just six of 11 today. I mean, that's definitely something that Matt Painter's gonna fix in practice, but definitely not something that you wanna look at. That's a good thing. Well, it's something that Matt Painter spoke about. They shot well against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. It was just the turnovers killed them, and at the end of the day, if you're turning the ball over, in Painter's words, you're taken away from any good that you're doing across the court. So 10.02 left to go here in West Lafayette, Indiana. 54-38 the score. We hope you're enjoying your Friday night here with us. At some point, Max, the Norse are going to have to start 
sending it from deep. And maybe that would work better for them because right now it just feels that they're trying to do too much. And when they do send the threes, they're finding some success, although 21% maybe goes against that. Yeah, still not shooting at a super high mark, but they're not just shoot they're just not shooting at a high mark just generally. Only 33% from the field right now. They haven't gotten to the line very much. The really, really good thing for Northern Kentucky that they need to hang on to and they need to keep doing is crashing the offensive glass. Right now, the Purdue big men have been pretty lazy with cleaning up the glass on the defensive end. Like Will Berg has got the ball taken out of his hands on rebounds three separate times just this half. So if they keep crashing the glass and keep trying to press these Purdue centers that, you know, may not have to jump for the ball necessarily just because they're so tall, but you know, that's the kind of thing that if you're jumping and they're not, well, you're probably going to get that rebound. Matt Payne has scheduled a hard non-conference go at it before Big Ten play starts. The likes of Alabama coming up, and you can't help but think if this was against Alabama, what would the scoreline be? Luckily for the Boilermakers, though, still time in this game to sort things out, and time before the Bama game as well. Dilling from deep. That one falls to left. Tijere, an athletic play to get his hands on it, but it will go out of bounds. Yeah, Dilling again just not hitting from deep. One of five this game, three of ten from the field generally. Just not, has not really looked comfortable in his first two games at the Division I level. Smith finds Cox on that far side. He drives in. A foul's called. It's an offensive foul. Off the ball on Will Berg. Yeah, that one was fairly obvious. He just took a just took a full arm extension. Hit a Tijere right in the face as he was trying to close down on the defensive end. Again, just kind of a silly foul for Berg to take. I mean, it was wide open or otherwise the pass would have just gotten dumped right into his lap. So as we fall under the 10 minute mark, it's now time for the Norse to do something if they can. Robinson fires it over to Vincent. Dilling finds some space. Beautiful speed by Smith though to close him down. Almost a travel, still moving around. Dilling, Tishrei just absolutely flies into the paint. Just can't get his hands on it. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if a Tijere could touch 12 feet with his vertical and his wingspan. And that is exactly what the Boilermakers needed to liven up this offense. Beautiful pass there into Robinson Berg, try to come forward and in the end, a foul is called. Yeah, Berg has been struggling with keeping his feet on the ground, and that's one of the things that the coaches on the bench are doing is you can just see him just jumping in the air trying to block it. I don't think he remembers that he's seven foot two. He can block the ball off of anybody without even jumping. He just got to keep his hands up and just try and alter the shot, not necessarily block it. Talking to Purdue earlier, they just said that you know, Will Berg helped improve Edie. Obviously, he was the person that Edie went against every practice, and so Will Berg's got it in him to get physical. He's obviously learned a lot from that two-time player of the year. Just now needs to get used to this more playing time, get settled. Yeah, and Braden Smith is checking out for the first time in this game. He's played for 32 straight minutes. Finally getting a rest on the bench. And Max, maybe now a time for Northern Kentucky to make something of the five that are on the court for the Boilermakers right now because you haven't got Burgess out there, you haven't got Berg. First, and Heidi are the biggest. Cox trying to find some space, looks for his freshman partner, finally gives it to Harris, and Harris tries to go against the Lithuanian Turn in and burn in, puts that one up, puts it down, and that's a nice move by the freshman. Yeah, Harris just getting a little bit of space there, and foul is called on the hold as Gerezger tried to get past him, but really good move from Harris, finding the space easily, 
It's kind of spinning around until they're getting it. We'll have a quick look at this again. Pirouetting like a ballerina. Lithuanian goes sliding there, unable to do anything. Is Pivorius. And then finally puts it in, does Harris. We'll be back in just a moment. Can the Boilermakers continue this momentum? It's college basketball on Big Ten Plus. The reach, but at this point, if Purdue plays just half decent basketball here, they'll probably close this one out. Well, before Atizure forgot about gravity and put it on the head of Burgess, I was saying that this is the second Horizon League game played in Mackey Arena this week. The women for the Boilermakers play Purdue Fort Wayne also in that league as Robertson sends that one from deep and that was a game where the Boilermakers had a good lead and Purdue Fort Wayne clawed their way back into it so you never know you've said it Max it's a a gritty league with teams that don't stop fighting and we'll see with 7-11 left to go can the Norse buy themselves a treat yeah and it's been uncharacteristically poor game from the Norse just shooting wise I mean, they didn't perform great against Florida State, but it was not to this level of poorness. It's, that's going to be a jump ball, and it will go the direction of Purdue, so they will keep possession. Lawyer was screaming for a timeout the entirety of the scramble on the floor. The ref didn't hear him, but in the end, luckily for the Boilermakers, they hold on to the ball. And with 20-point lead, Max, you think maybe Purdue was going to start stretching their legs. Kaufman ran, can't hold on to that one. Puts it into Lawyer. He thinks about it. Inside to first and first. High dominance over Pettis, the second, and gets the two points. Yeah, Lawyer got very lucky that Kaufman Run was able to recover and grab that one. After it was tipped, it was a poor inbound pass, but ultimately ends in two for Purdue, and Caleb first getting his first bucket of the game. Robinson nearly forgetting the ball there, but it's picked up by the Lithuanian. Pivorus puts that shot up. The rebound taken by Robinson. Pettis the second gets in there. And then finally the foul's called. I did have to weave myself there, trying to get around the referee on the sideline. Once again, it's just more offensive rebounds for Northern Kentucky. I mean, they're up to 14 for the game right now. And I mean, 14 offensive rebounds, and you only have 40 points. Something's going wrong, and it's mainly the second-chance points. They just have not been coming, shooting 30% from the field. They were shooting 7 of 8 from free throws until they missed that one. Now it's 7 of 9. The paint crew starting to cry for French fries. If he misses this one, they get him, and that's the loudest roar of the night. And it's because everybody in here is getting some free French fries. Max, dinner's on me. <laughs> Very kind of you. Ah, at least I could do. Harris had some space in the corner there. First, dispossessed by Pettis the second. He's got Goreska on the right-hand side. Spins around Lawyer. And here's the problem. They do nice plays, the Norse, and then just don't have anybody off the ball, especially lower down. But that was really good transition defense, and Atijere has just fouled out for the illegal screen. He was just way too wide on that one. You can, you can see it's just way too wide. Extends with the hip. That one's going to get called pretty much every time. And so, unfortunately for Atijere, no more basketball for him tonight. The paint crew helping Atijere find his seat there. A shame, really, because such an explosive athletic player. He's been one of the highlights in terms of offense for both sides tonight. He's been, the, he's been the Norris's best player today, at least in my opinion, without a doubt. I mean, he's been fantastic on the defensive end. On the offensive end, he's really made things happen in the second half. I mean, right now, Northern Kentucky is just struggling to do anything right now. They're one of their last 10. They haven't scored in the last two and a half minutes. The Tijere was really bringing that kind of flair that they needed, that spark. Caleb first having a nice go at it here. I thought he was actually going to slam it on the head of Trey Robinson, but rolled it in instead. And that's going to get this Boilermaker faithful going first up to Trey Kaufman. Ren nearly the chance for a good-looking transitional play, unable to do it. Caleb first, one of the reasons that the Boilermakers had so much success last year. Him and players like Mason Gillis happy to 
come in off the bench when they could easily go other places and start. And Matt Painter speak, or excuse me, spoke a lot about that last year. But great to see Kayla First still here and getting some minutes and some good minutes at that. And it feels in the last few minutes, the Boilermakers finally just waking up a bit, looking to try and close this one out as we fall below the five second mark. Yeah, Purdue has not been playing up to their, what they would consider their average level today. It's kind of been a, a sloppy game, 12 turnovers apiece for both teams. That's way too many for a Purdue team that, I mean, granted, Northern Kentucky does force a lot of turnovers. It's been a lot more sloppy play than it has been Northern Kentucky playing really tremendous defense. Two situations there where maybe the North just need to let it go. Under two seconds, Pettis the second checks up. But it's all rim. Cox on the rebound. That's a beautiful pass from Harris. Lawyer goes up, and that plays Rawls. And that's more what you expect from this Boilermaker team. Yeah, fantastic find there from Jakari Harris on the almost hook shot pass. That was the Lawyer, and finding him there. We'll have a quick look at that. Exceptional pass. Even Braden Smith had to say, that's a nice one, mate. Up to Lawyer, finish it off with finesse as you expect. And with that, we'll throw it to commercial. Be back in just a moment. Issues last time, but this time we're going to try and check in with Alex. Alex. All right, and we're back, you guys. It's been a really strong game so far, and we're going to talk about defense in a little bit since we hit on that earlier. But what I want to talk about right now is the offense. Right now, Purdue is sitting at a 56% field goal percentage, and NKU is at 30% field goal percentage. Another thing I also want to talk about in comparison to last game is Lawyer had 21 points, and right now he's sitting at 16 points. And Trey Kaufman Wren had 15 points last game and 14 so far this game. But talking about defense, uh, NKU is at 29 rebounds in and Purdue is at 28, so something to keep out for. They're being strong on defense, but I think they could be a little bit stronger. It's something we'll watch out for the rest of the four minutes of this game, you guys. Alex, you know, Max, something I was thinking about as, as Alex was talking is we haven't mentioned it too much, but I think Purdue fans have heard enough about the departure of Edie. We all understand Edie's gone to the NBA. It, you can see, though, in certain times, it's a team that is figuring out what its offensive identity is and yeah. who it flows through. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that's the difficulty of losing a two-time National Player of the Year, especially a guy that's as big and strong as Zach Eady is. You know, it's not like he was exactly a, a plug-and-play type of guy as, as a point guard or super mobile as Vincent hits a nice three there from the corner. But, yeah, I mean, it's just the transition phase. And, you know, obviously Purdue's got a lot of guys that they think can fill the void. And, you know, like I said earlier, Trakoff and Wren definitely was overshadowed as first gets called for the legal screen, but Trakoff and Wren was definitely overshadowed by Zach Eady, and, but he's a very good player. I mean, and nobody was really surprised in this Purdue program that he stepped up immediately and was a driving factor in the wins that they've had. And also we have to remember, obviously, Jacobson hasn't played, well, at all, apart from that first possession where he had that knee-to-knee -knee contact and went out and came back out on crutches. So you have to keep in mind, maybe this is a slightly different game with Jacobson in the fray. That's a beautiful takeaway there by Cox. He sends it to his freshman counterpart and Harris spins that around. Somehow Cox has got to the other side and kept it in and you're getting to look at what this pair of freshmen are gonna do for the next four years. Cox had some space to shoot there, doesn't do it. Another beautiful pass from Harris, and first finishing it off. 
Nice two, nice passes, Max. Yeah, Jakari Harris is definitely a guy that they've brought in, and he is a great ball handler, skilled passer. I mean, he has been kind of what they need in the absence of Braden Smith. If Braden Smith is out of the game, Jakari Harris needs to come in and do his job. Josh Dilling kind of showing the story of the game for the Norse. They find those threes, but when they send them, it's more than anything, just not enough heat. Harris checks up and nearly gets that one. This time, though, too much heat on it. That somehow rolls all the way to Josh Dilling. Robinson found himself on the outside. Not somewhere that he's found himself too much, Max, given that he's been working quite a bit in the paint. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, it just continues to, you know, Robinson, the close out from first, trying to get him to jump, didn't get it. Pushing to the sideline, got lucky as he was fouled. But now Northern Kentucky back to the line in what is essentially a formality role here as probably Burgess comes back in. So Robinson goes to the line, 226. This one all but done in favor of the Boilermakers. I think for Purdue fans, Max, they'll be happier to see what's happened in the closing stages of this game because from the middle of the first half to the middle of the second, it wasn't exactly pretty. Great defense, though. Yeah, a lot more active on the defensive end and you know, more active hands, getting a lot more steals and forcing turnovers from, from Kentucky, but that's not the brand of basketball that they really play and it's a little bit different maybe that's intentionally different not sure but it's just one of those things that you do have to take the positives but you got to learn from the negatives and there were certainly some negatives this game and you know you've got to you got to work out those kinks heading into the really really difficult games coming up with Alabama at home and then you're going to go away and go play Marquette Cox checks up not able to get that one to fall first. Gets the board and gets the points. He's had a really nice closing to this game. Dilling finally sends one, holds it, but that won't make it go in. The Lithuanian put under a lot of pressure. Nice hands, though, there. And a the fellow Lithuanian will put it in. So from one countryman around the horn to the other, a good-looking play and an example of what this Norse team can do when they do get going. Yeah, as long as they keep rebounding and, you know, crashing the offensive glass, that's definitely going to be a plus for them. I mean, they've definitely been the beneficiary of some long rebounds today, but that's the brand of basketball they play. They take deep shots, you're going to get long rebounds. Colvin had a look, but can't see it in. For Esger and Colvin, it's a matchup. Maybe we would have wanted to see a little bit more this game, but it's had some moments. You see it there again. You see a foul and you see the frustration of Colvin. And that's a good sign, right, Max, about this team is the fact you're up. The game's done. But again, you, you know, you're very frustrated in your actions. It may be an indication of how much, you know, these players are fighting for minutes right now. Yeah, and it's, you know, sloppy cleanup fouls like that that, you know, ultimately they don't matter right now. I mean, the game's of, you know, the results of formality. It's 70 to 48, but it's those types of fouls that, well, if you give those away in a two-point, three-point, four-point game with four minutes left, that's not a good thing, obviously, and especially when the other team's in bonus. But it just goes to the, you know, the mental grind that it is to get into this Purdue team regularly. And Miles Colvin has really been working. He really sh proved himself against the Islanders a couple days ago. But, you know, this game, you know, not a lot of people have really taken advantage of it to show why they should be playing more. With Smith playing so much of this game, we didn't see Harris and Cox on the court together too much, but when we did, really nice sparks. Cox unable to get that one to go, and on the rebound, you see Burgess there get physical. Interestingly, there at uh, the end, you see there's Rapolis giving him a hug. Yeah, it's just one of those frustrating things. First got his hands on it, trying to get the Offensive rebound, then Burgess got the O rebound, couldn't get it in, and jump ball goes away in Northern Kentucky. Favorius checks, and as we fall under 30 seconds, the Boilermakers will have the chance to just close this one out. Burgess thought about it. Cam Heidi will drive in, tries to make a highlight reel play, but gets denied. 
that unfettered aggression that we usually see from Cam Heidi with the basketball. He's been trying to go at it a little bit more at the end of this game, but obviously drawing the foul and getting two free throws for himself. Would have loved to have seen Burgess hit that three there. He had the space. <laughs> Really thought about it, but fires it into the corner. He can make them. I mean, that's the interesting thing, Max, all, about all of the bigs for the Boilermakers. Burgess, Jacobson, Berg, they can all hit three. So who knows if this team morphs into something that maybe the Celtics are doing of having everybody outside the arc and sending it in. Yeah, and, you know, that's kind of the way that modern basketball is going. It's a very perimeter-oriented game now as... The Purdue fans are getting into it for the last couple seconds as a clock issue. The clock started when it shouldn't have. But yeah, I mean, that's just kind of where the modern game is going. But, you know, Purdue is kind of untraditional in the sense that they still kind of play around a big man in the middle. There wasn't too many questions about whose house it was tonight. The Norse put up a great fight, had the chance to get close. They got it within seven. But that's as close as they came to sniffing out a win from the Boilermakers. They'll move to 2-0 against the Norse. But, you know, Max, I think it's a really great opponent to bring in here by Matt Painter to force the Boilermakers to get physical and fight out for a win. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, Northern Kentucky, they did put up a fight. They're a good team. It just wasn't their day. And, you know, that's just an effect of coming into a very hostile environment that, like Mackey and... In the gun, Zoom it. Hey, yo, what time? Soldrade Bye bye. Bye. You will not edit the Uh-huh. I'm Android <laughs>
Yo, Poseidon Weary Anda Poseidon ha? Aha Enak anda ID mana orang lah asal lah pergi ke? Nah, mana dia? Rosan lah, mortal player.